Turns out Alaska's permafrost isn't very permanent. Permafrost covers nearly a quarter of the northern hemisphere, and if that melts, life as a whole lot of folks know it will be put on ice. Alaskan permafrost, layers of soil that remain consistently frozen, is thawing, and scientists think this may lead to a further rise in global warming, regardless of attempts to curb it. According to the New York Times, researchers withdrew water and sediment samples from permafrost cores and installed temperature probes in the ground. Their aim is to better understand how permafrost interacts with the environment. In northern Alaska, permafrost 65 feet deep is said to have warmed from minus 8 to minus 3 degrees Celsius over the past decades. Globally, permafrost is believed to hold approximately double the amount of carbon currently in the atmosphere. When it defrosts, the carbon is sent back into the atmosphere. Scientists believe this could warm the planets over the coming centuries. Global warming really isn't cool, but those who try to beat it are. Go Team Earth! Global warming could unleash viruses and permafrost. Scientists warn that climate change is melting permafrost soils, which may lead to the release of ancient viruses and bacterium. Permafrost is permanently frozen soil. It is a good preserver for microbes and viruses because of low temperatures and the lack of oxygen. As temperatures in the Arctic Circle rise, the permafrost melts, which may lead to the release of trapped viruses. Layers of permafrost could also be exposed by mining and drilling operations. Meanwhile, bacteria that can form spores are able to survive longer compared to bacteria that do not form spores. In August 2016, more than 20 people were reportedly infected by the anthrax virus that was released by thawed permafrost in the Yamal Peninsula in the Arctic Circle. Could geoengineering help save the planet? With global warming causing heat waves and rising sea levels, and potentially bringing about more devastating consequences, scientists are turning to climate engineering solutions to keep temperatures down. Geoengineering has two approaches to cool the planet, carbon dioxide removal and solar radiation management. Taking the direct air capture approach is Swiss company Climeworks, which uses several collectors to suck in air that contains carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is filtered and collected, while other air molecules are returned to the atmosphere. A separate Harvard project, meanwhile, is working on dimming sunlight. The team plans to release limestone particles using a high-altitude balloon and then observe its effect on the stratosphere. The limestone spray will supposedly reflect solar radiation and slow greenhouse gas warming. It will also neutralize the acids that destroy the ozone, thus helping to restore that protective layer. Another technique aims to cool the seas and prevent coral bleaching by spraying salt generated from salt water to create more reflective clouds. Critics of geoengineering warn that such solutions are a temporary fix and run the risk of dealing more damage in the long run. It's definitely a radical step from reducing carbon emissions, which many believe is the more effective way to curb global warming. The Doomsday Seed Vault just got an upgrade. The repository of the world's seeds is getting an upgrade after global warming wrecked a bit of havoc. The Global Seed Vault in Svalbard, Norway was designed to be an impregnable Arctic stronghold that would safeguard plant genealogy for the future. But rising temperatures have led to melting permafrost and heavy rain, causing flooding in the entryway. Water reportedly gushed 15 meters into the front tunnel, but promptly refroze. The seeds were not affected by the meltwater and remained safely frozen in the minus 18 degree storage facility. Precautions against future flooding are being taken in the facility. This includes removing heat sources such as a power transformer from the tunnel. Drainage ditches will also be dug around the mountainside, and the tunnel walls will be waterproofed for extra protection. Vault managers are now monitoring the facility 24 hours a day as they continue to minimize risks and take measures to ensure the seed bank will be able to operate without human help in the near future. The state of the climate is dismal. A report from the U.S.'s National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration confirmed that 2016 was a year of extreme heat, surpassing 2015 as the warmest year since records began 137 years ago. 
A strong El Nino coupled with long-term global warming led to land and sea surface temperatures reaching unprecedented heights in 2016, making it the hottest year on record. The planet's greenhouse gas emissions likewise went up, with carbon dioxide concentrations increasing to more than 400 parts per million for the first time ever. Global sea levels are at their highest, at 3.25 inches more than the 1993 average. The past two decades have seen sea levels go up at an average of 0.13 inches annually, with the Western Pacific and Indian Oceans showing the highest rates of increase. Water and precipitation cycles exhibited extremes, with droughts plaguing parts of Africa and South America. Other areas, meanwhile, were beset by floods and tropical cyclones, which in 2016 numbered 93. The report's findings emphasize that the symptoms of climate change show no sign of slowing and will likely intensify unless major changes are made. But with recent blows to efforts combating climate change, including the Trump administration pulling out of the Paris Agreement, it seems we'll see more record-breaking weather in the years to come. Rising temperatures could be linked to an increase in diabetes cases. A recent study shows that an increase in cases of type 2 diabetes may be linked to global warming, including 100,000 new annual cases in the U.S. alone. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, about one out of every three Americans will develop type 2 diabetes. A study published in the journal BMJ Open Diabetes Research and Care found that as the average annual temperature rose by 1 degree Celsius, the number of diabetes cases rose by 3.1 per 10,000 people. Researchers suspect the rise could be due to the inactivity of brown adipose tissue, a natural body fat that produces heat from burning the fat stored in organs to keep the body warm when temperatures drop. If temperatures stay warm, the inactivity of brown adipose tissue can increase fat stored in organs, causing glucose intolerance and diabetes. According to the World Health Organization, about 422 million people worldwide suffer from either type 1 or type 2 diabetes.